So Splunk. Splunk is a very powerful tool used for SIM and especially it helps the organization to collect, analyze and visualize the data from various sources to detect and respond to security threats. It's currently being acquired by Cisco. In this video, we are going to cover top 10 most frequently asked questions about Splunk SIM. So if you are preparing for security analyst interview or SOC analyst interview, this is must watch video for you. So let's get started. The very first question is what are the components of Splunk? Okay. So there are majorly three components in this Splunk. The first is the first is forwarder. So forwarder is like the agent that is installed on the endpoints. It's there, there could be two kind of forwarder. We could have we can have a universal forwarder or heavy forwarder. A universal forwarder is the lightweight forwarder. You can install directly to the Windows machine, Linux machine or servers and then can start collecting the data. Then you can send it to the indexer. So this is works like a data exporter that collects the data and send it to the uh, next hop. So what's the next hop? Next it goes to the indexer. So all the endpoints like Windows, Linux, uh, virtual machines, uh, application, database, networking devices like uh, routers, switches, firewall, they, they take the data in the syslog, SNMP and database collect the data in terms of tables, audit, query. And these are all the different formats and then it export it to the uh, Splunk search head. Okay. Now search head is the one where we as a user log in and perform some query. So if you go back, you can understand we sit on the search head and from the search head, we then run a query. For example, data set source type, maybe firewall and IP address 1.1.1. Now this query go to the indexer and from there it collects, it retrieve all the required data and we see live on our dashboard or on the query result, okay? So this is how this entire Splunk work and these are the three major components of it, all right? Let's talk about the second question. Second question is name the common ports used by Splunk, okay? So these are some of the common ports. The first is the Splunk web port. Splunk web port uses port 8000. 8, then we have Splunk management port that uses port 8089. Then we have Splunk network port which uses 514. Uh, then next we have Splunk index replication port which uses port 8080. Next, we have Splunk indexer replication port that uses port 8080. Then we have Splunk indexing port which uses port uh, 9997. Next, we have finally we have KV store which uses port uh, 8191. All right. So these are some of the important ports. Question number three: What kind of what are the different kinds of a Splunk forwarder? Okay. So we majorly have universal forwarder and heavyweight forwarder so heavyweight forwarder is is basically used uh, is is it again a splunk agent that is that is deployed for advanced functionality including parsing indexing capability and uh, it also used for filtering the data as well okay next you have universal forwarder which is lightweight okay which is which is installed uh, on the on the to the different system on the non splunk system to gather the data locally so in many of the scenarios universal forwarders send the data to the heavyweight forwarder as well so these are these are the two uh, forwarder that are used remember both are agents only one is used for the lightweight activity another is used for the heavyweight to collect multiple data to perform the parsing at its own level itself okay that's where heavyweight forwarders are used Fourth question is how can you troubleshoot Splunk performance issue? Now this is very uh, situational question. In this case, you you have to take some time and you know uh, don't counter the interviewer about a specific scenario. Ask him instead. Don't do that. Uh, you just try to cover all the different possibility that you can think of. Okay. 
so possibly you can start with the you can check these plunk d uh, d min logs file as well which is uh, which gives you the information about if there is any connectivity issue from the uh, you know from the network or from the different components so you will first check that remember you have to tell them the purpose of checking that file so you have to it doesn't sometime it doesn't matter uh, uh, if you follow a sequence right sequence but what is important is why are you doing this okay why are you checking these Splunk d uh, Splunk daemon uh, log file because you can say that i'm checking this so that i understand if there is any uh, you know limit exceeded uh, somewhere so you get an alert or some kind of notification okay or maybe there is any issue with the backend database retrieval or something so you get the alert there next you can check the server performance issue like uh, cpu memory usage disk io and everything next you can check the number of saved search that are running at, the, at present and also their resource consumption as well so that also you can verify usually on the dashboard itself on the search head itself you see the saved search everything in the system next we have splunk on splunk's issue so that is basically uh, basically it's kind of uh, uh, another and added splunk app it's an app basically which you can install uh, to retrieve the logs or to analyze or to visualize the data of Splunk itself. So this has become very helpful on those situations. So this is this is about installing an additional app. You can, if you don't have it, install from the marketplace. This is really a good help. Now you can also install Firebug. This is also a very good app, which, but it requires you to in, uh, run the Splunk on, uh, Splunk on the Firefox browser. You can enable in your system and you have to log on the uh, Splunk using the Fire, Firefox and then you can see uh, the display, the HTTP request and everything, the time spent on each of the query. So that also become very helpful to analyze on troubleshoot the issue related to Splunk performance. Okay. Next question is, tell me some of the commonly used uh, transform command in Splunk. Now the, for this you can just if you remember all the commands then it's good but try to cover at least five so i've covered eval eval is, uh, is a command which can be used to create new fields or modify the existing one based on the expressions like i can create eval new field uh, which can be an addition of two fields or conjunction of two fields right i can even use the rex transform command which is used to extract using the regular expression so i can extract certain fields using the rex I can specify the rex field, username and certain condition like logged in or logged out related condition as well. So this is all about creating a regular expression. Okay. Remember, make sure when you are answering this to the interviewer, mention the purpose and give some example command as well while you talk. Okay. Stats. Now stat is very important command because this is used for the stat statistical calculations such as count, maybe sum maybe average of the data. So in, in the log analysis, Plunk uh, as, as a security analyst, you mostly be using the uh, count option to see the number of uh, HTTP requests you receive, number of packet has been sent to a certain traffic, maybe in case of brute force attack, um, just to see the attempt has been initiated by a specific servers, right? Next is the lookup. So you can talk about it's it's used to enrich the event with the data uh, events with the data from the external lookup table. So usually as a as a security engineer, you create a lookup table based on CIDR IP address block. So let's say uh, you want to see all the traffic on the firewall based on certain IP addresses or subnets. So you can create an, a lookup table with that data and then all the logs entry will perform a match or perform a lookup, basically manual lookup on the back end uh, for every IP address. So that's where it has become very helpful. Next, we have rename option where you can just rename the fields and it becomes very helpful because we never know what, what, what logs, what format of data carries which format of uh, fields name, right? So some, some data format 
some log file uses src underscore ip some of them uses src but if you have a habit of uh, going through src every time you can just rename it so it's all up to you okay now let's talk about the sixth question which is what is the command to stop a story start and stop splunk well if you are on a linux machine so it's simply slash a splunk instance and then start splunk stop that's simple if you are using windows in, with windows you again uh, open the command prompt the command is very much simple okay all right so let's move to the question number seven so question number seven is what are some of the most important configuration files in splunk okay so this is very important uh, props config this this is very important because this is this configures the data extraction uh, this takes care of the transformation display setting uh, during indexing in the Splunk as well. Next we have indexes uh, conf file. This manages the data indexes. Uh, defines It also defines the settings like retention policy, access controls into the Splunk as well. Then we have inputs uh, config. So this configs the data input for ingestion uh, into Splunk including file path, network ports, event processing and other informations as well. Next we have transforms uh, conf file. This defines the field extraction and uh, also any aliases or any uh, other data transformation for enhancing the index data as well. Next we have server conf. Now this is important and helpful to configure server related settings maybe related to authentication, user parameters, SSL, deployment, uh, deployment of server configuration onto the Splunk as well. All right, so these are the important configuration file. Next, question number eight is what is the importance of license master in Splunk and what happens if the license master is unreachable? Well, in Splunk, the license master ensures that the right amount of data get indexed. Since this, since this Splunk is, uh, is licensed based on the data volume that reaches to the, the platform within uh, 24 hours of a window, the license, uh, license master basically ensures that your Splunk environment uh, stay within the constraint of that purchase volume. So if you have purchased like maybe 10, 2 GB, 10 GB, whatever it is, if you are going beyond that, so it should generate an alert, right? So if, if ever the license master become unreachable, the user cannot search the data, but however, this will not affect the data flowing into the indexer, okay? So you won't be able to search anything, but it will not impact the data coming from the uh, uh, forwarder to the indexer and from indexer to the search head it's just that you won't be able to run any query okay okay and that's what it's been mentioned here as well next we have what is the difference between the default fields and the interesting field well you see the default fields yes we, you see the default fields are the fields which are automatically extracted by the Splunk during the indexing process process itself the moment you onboard a new log file into the system, uh, the default fields are automatically created like source type or uh, maybe source field. These are automatically generated, right? So um, uh, default fields are very, very important for search operation available in the network. When we talk about the interesting fields, these are user defined fields that are identified these, uh, by this Splunk. Uh, very important for multiple activity let's say it's a, it's an http data so you will have uri path and or you know host related information um, and a user can choose to promote interesting data to become extracted field or use them directly in the search query as well so this is all possible with it right um, next we have and remember one thing with the default and interesting field uh, most of the time you will find the source and source type in the default field that's the most common thing but if you have uh, uh, interesting fields make sure the more interesting field you have it better it helps you better to perform the investigation right 
Now, question number 10, how to remove duplicates entry from Splunk in the Splunk search results? You can use the DDAP. DDAP is like deduplication command, search command that can uh, that can remove any duplicate events based on the uh, on the specific fields or maybe on the all the fields so you just have to enter your search query pipe ddub and immediately on our probably is the fields let's say i want to deduplicate the source ip address and destination ip ip address both i can enter both the uh, both the fields with with a comma or maybe i just want to remove the duplicate duplicate fields in the source IP address field, so I can just enter DW SRC IP or maybe SRC underscore IP. Okay, so these are the all ten most commonly asked uh, questions on Splunk. Let me know if you have any questions, any query in your mind. I would love to hear that. Thank you.